Tooth, you can what tooth clean your teeth in this, but there's so much in it, part of it bails out the edge. <laughs> yeah, it's got a it's pouring, it's got a pouring spout yeah, now. It's got two pouring spouts <laughs> yeah. I should have got it, I've come leaking out the crack. <laughs> right, we're on break aren't we Dad? We're on a uh, tea break, yeah, good old English tea break, we're having some tea. <laughs> Not stereotypical a... at all. No, 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 but it's uh... Fire's funny today, the weather we had so much rain, even though the wood was dry that we put on there, wasn't it? It was just strange. I think the ground's so damp, the damp There's it. something damp in the air, I don't know, but uh, we had the bellows on it a few times, but we got enough to boil the tea, and that's the most important thing. So welcome to part two of the carving shack. As you can see behind us, we're making fairly good progress. Uh, it's quite a simple build, as I said in a previous episode, and there's not actually much left that we've got to do. We've done the back, we've heart parked on the roof, we've obviously done the frame, uh, we're going to add things to the roof in a minute and I'll explain that uh, and I'll also explain what we're going to do on the side but for now it's a really peaceful afternoon. The sun's over there and it's about to set. We've probably got another hour and a half of sunset, of sun light and then it's sunset but it's, it's fitting in well in the camp. It's next to the Saxon house over there and the turf roof Viking house there and it just seems to be fitting in and it's where it's meant to be so we've collected most of the resources from this woodland but the hazel hurdles or the hazel fencing the, the wattle fencing if you like those uh, panels those we couldn't make here because there is no hazel growing in this woodland if you'd like to see how to make these they're just here if you'd like to see how to how we make these go, i'll put a video that's either up here or in the description below and it's called you can look it up how to build a medieval fence or building a medieval fence and it's an old english technique well it's it's primitive really it goes back probably thousands of years but it's, it's certainly here in england it's a very old traditional technique of building a hazel hurdle or wattle wall and it involves using green hazel you can use willow as well and sometimes birch and green because it's obviously got the sap in it it's bendy and you can weave it in and out vertical stakes and it makes a really rigid solid wall uh, it's, it's certainly time consuming to do, it's not really, it, it's fairly tricky, but it's more time consuming and labour intensive, but the end result is absolutely incredible. So uh, if you'd like to see that video, I'll put a link in the description. We're going to have a quick tea break and then we're going to crack on with a bit more work. <laughs> so hot, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> There's no question, you can have to do a pretend one. Oh, it's lovely, I've got no stuff. <laughs> Mine's okay. all right because it's in the wood, it's cooled down. Yeah, See now you've got down. aluminium or whatever it is. Poisoning, yeah. <laughs> Poisoning. Well we, we were just saying earlier that uh, it's really quiet at the moment in terms of air traffic because yeah. certainly here in the UK, I know globally obviously with what's going on, the air traffic is, an air, is just no planes in the air. 
I'll say that and one will come over. Helicopters, aren't it? Yeah. But we just noticed it's usually this spot, there's a light airfield not too far away, and you'll get mm. them. We're just on the flight path, they just come over don't they, as they take off. Um, there's a little one in the air now, but usually we get them every what? 10 minutes normally? At least, but the worst one is the helicopter training. Oh, yeah. Because they, they come about a mile off the airdrome <laughs> and sit over like the whole thing. Over the there? camp yeah. like a drone. Straight over the top, <laughs> just go round and round and round in circles, you know. Well, they, well they, obviously, they do do training and they've got to yeah. train somewhere, but <laughs> rather they didn't train over the top. It's like a giant drone. We've, we've had some. Um, We've had a lot of rain this winter. Hell of a lot. And um, we're just noticing, I can see in the sunlight there, can you see the bugs, Dad? Yeah, I've noticed them coming We're just noticing there's been afternoon. little hatches of, of, they're not mosquitoes, I don't know what they are. You feel but that? Little, yeah, there's little hatches of these bugs coming out where it's gone from so, so raining and so much rain and, yeah. and so much stagnant water, I guess the flies are laying their eggs. Yeah, and then uh, and they're hatching out the wall. Yeah, we've just got a lot, a lot more flies and things. Yeah, it's a big one. Yep, that's free. Now it's the tap root. Oh, there yeah. you go. Wow, look at that. That's so rotten. Look at that. It's, it's like an octopus. See the, see the fungi all in it? All the mycelium and things. That is totally rotten.
Well, it's another day and I'm just working on getting these horizontal braces in, which are acting as braces, but they're also a kind of decorative thing as well. And I'll just show you quickly how I'm creating these notches. Some of them are just a sort of standard flat notch. Some of them are, where they're going up against the round wood are a bit more of a saddle notch, so they're a bit more curved. But essentially, all I'm using is a saw and a knife, and I'm just sawing a couple of grooves probably about half, just under halfway through the wood, depending on how thin it is. This end is really thin, the other end's a bit thicker. But essentially I'm just coming down and, and sawing away every, maybe probably half an inch. And that's just gonna help to loosen and pop out these chunks rather than chip away with the ax, which will make it quite inaccurate and I'm just putting strain on this wood all the time. You can do this much more finesse by just using a saw and a knife. So for example here, I've done my notches. And all I'm going to do is just place, um, this one will be difficult to take out, but I'm just going to loosen this one and I'm just going to tap my knife in and just turn it. You hear that crack? That should have just loosened this. And there you go. Now it will splinter off a bit, but that's what you're trying to do, is just remove these chunks. And that didn't remove all of it because the other blocks are still in place. There's the last of it. Once you've got one block out, you can then get your knife, the bevel of your knife in a little bit more. Again, just turn, I'm just loosening that, and that just popped. Out that comes, and now I can come in really flat and horizontal and just get the notches out much easier. Like that. One more notch there, and there's obviously a... I'm going to come down on there. Just to loosen it a bit, because there's a knot there. That should do it, and one more down here. There we go. And that's, obviously now I've still got to tidy up these areas here, but that's got the main, the main part of the notch already there. Nice and quickly, nice and easy, minimal effort as well. So now I just tidy it up and get down to the base of where I did those saw cuts. And that'll be the bottom of the notch. And then I can auger in the hole. I'm starting to get rid of those saw cuts and that's the base of where I want that notch. So I'm just coming in a little bit deeper. I don't want to go any deeper than where the saw notches were, the saw cuts were. Occasionally you may need to come in with a vertical stop cut, just to peel these parts away that you've been slicing. These are very rudimentary guys, they're not, they're not done with a chisel. And they're done by eye. But you can tidy it, you can tidy it up once you've got those bigger notches out. So this is actually part of why I wanted open sides. I, I could have used the hazel hurdles there, the hazel wattle walls as siding as well, but I figured two things. A, it's gonna make it much darker inside the carving shack, but also it means if I'm using long pieces of wood, I'm limited to the space on the sides. Whereas now I've got this open, I can slide long pieces of wood in and out through here much longer than the shelter itself and I can work on big long pieces. That was the idea of leaving this, the sides open. So now I'm just going to auger the holes in the end of the wood. So I don't know if I said a minute ago but this is day two on episode two. Dad's not here at the moment, I've come here a bit earlier. He's, uh, he did his back in last night, I think yesterday he hurt his back. So um, yeah, I'm going to try and get a bit more of the manual labour stuff done now and then we can cook up some food and, and he doesn't have to do as much work when he comes. But because I'm working on my own, it's quite hard to keep these level. I'm not, I've not got a spirit level or anything like that. I'm just doing it by eye. Um, but what I'm doing is using, using a stick, just a stick like this to prop things up. So if I can get this flush end, this back end at the right level, which is a little bit lower than that, up there. That just rests on the stick, and that gives me time here to check everything's level by eye. So I guess I, I, you guys can probably see better from there, but what I'm doing is just pinching it in, and then I'll do a couple of turns of the auger, and then once that auger pinches in like that, I can leave, let go, and the stick just rests there. The auger just it's rests on the point. Now I can just go by eye and see if everything's level. Looks pretty good to me. There's a bit of a kick in the wood anyway, towards this end. 
And then now, because I need to lift the other end, rather than move the support stick, I'm just going to use a twig just to loosely pin this in. Like that. I've all good through. Now I can just pivot the other end up level and that stick should hold it in place. So I'll just show you how I make a notch, a flat sort of section at the end of the log. I've made a little marking there, so I'm just going to cut this deeper to the depth that I want this flat notch to be. It's quite thick, thicker log this, so I'm going to go halfway through. So about there, now I'm going to make another one exactly the same. Same depth, a little bit more, and then one more. Okay, they're all about level. So normally, like last time, I would pop, come in here, batten it down and pop out, but this time, I'm going to come in at just above the middle knot of the wood there. So I'm coming in at the side. And you'll see it should pop off fairly flat. Like that. Look at that. There's one. There's two. Three. Now you can see instantly with just a minimal amount of work. I've got those three chunks off and all I need to do is come a little bit lower because you can see those saw marks still so I'm not the right depth. And it's just a case of tidying it up now. Level with the saw marks. And the great thing about being, I'm, I'm looking down the log at the moment, is that I can see exactly how flat it is. So any high bits I can just take off by eye. Look, just looking along the log. And that's now pretty much as flush as I can get it with just using my knife rather than the chisel. So it, he's made it guys, he's arrived. I've crawled up. What's happened that explains to them? Uh, a classic case for somebody who suffers from back problems is what's called an extension. It's that, bending forwards. So literally yesterday in the morning I thought I'm going to chop some of those blocks up for the log burner. Got the log splitting axe which is heavy. Split, split, split away and a block just rolled about two feet further away. So rather than go across, I've got to be careful now, go across the block so I'm more vertical I reached out, stretched, and lifted the axe up at full length. Bang, back goes. Anybody who's had a bad back, you know what it's like. I'm yeah. not, I just want to keep moving. You've done moment. well, it's been a few years since you've had a bad back. So it's, oh, about it's three done. years. Yeah. I, I do exercises, I kid you not, every single morning. I do not miss. Yeah, you do. Every time I walk into the house, if it's morning, I, you, yeah, you're doing I, an I'm exercise. I'm doing stretches because I yeah. don't want it, but it's been playing up for about, about a week, just over a week. Little twinges and that was obviously, but what was you saying with sports? It's cold. I did well, all it's the cold. wrong things. It's winter, it's cold, obviously you're not First thing leaning the over to get something. You're not going to do a warm up and a stretch before using an axe. I personally no, I don't. don't. It's just, it, because it's not classed as, you don't sort of see it as a sport. It doesn't feel like exercise really using an axe. It no. is, but it doesn't feel like it because it's quite satisfying. So I guess cold weather, you said it was twinging before. Yeah, playing up, it's it's gone, way, it was but... waiting to go. But uh, So what do you do, guys do? I do exercises every morning. What do you think? Is it the rub on the back? Is it the painkillers? Is there some witch's remedy that you can get rid of bats? Because I find it takes about a week now, I'm going to be stuffed. I can't bend down, I've got to go down very, very carefully. The car, in and out the car is 
It's hard, isn't it? Two to three minutes ago, <laughs> sitting is a nightmare because the osteo, when I used to go to him, said, your head is weighing what, 12? That's heavy. Eight, 10, 12 pounds. <laughs> So every time you, oh, I can feel it. He's doing it now, look. This is how you, you do forward. your back twice. Well, I'm illustrating the people. A lot of people got bad backs and we you ha- tend to get them again. We have a saying here in our family, the Pullen family, is you do you have to do it twice. If Let's you do, do something, if, for example, if you're using a hammer and a nail and you hit your thumb, get ready for the second time yeah. because we always do things twice. And yeah. I always remember that time on the trampoline at the cousin's, yeah. our cousin's, <laughs> my cousin's birthday, I think it was when so, we were younger. We were on the trampoline and on comes dad. And he, get, he did gymnastics back in the day, didn't he? Yeah, I was, I was very good at gymnastics, was representing the school. <laughs> so he comes onto this trampoline and he starts bouncing up and down and we're thinking, yeah, here we go, Dad. And he, he a said, 55. A 55, yeah. And he goes, watch this. <laughs> double, double spin in the air. Watch this. So he goes, what? he literally says, watch this. He jumps, does a forward somersault, gets about halfway and lands plum on his head. Crap, it went crap. And it went, didn't it? Yeah. And then you went, oh, that's really done really it Really done me. And then you did it again. Yeah, well, you show off, don't you? Don't all men want to show off? They want to show oh, off. I, can do, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. Crack. Same game. Yeah, same place. Same Same. Oh, it was so funny. But yeah, we history of back problems. I was saying to Dad, I've had a bit, I've had bad backs in the past. So I, I played Bits, hockey. I played field hockey up to oh, university yeah. first team level. And obviously you're constantly bent over. You bend your knees, but you either get a knee injury, and I've got bad knees from that, or you get a back injury. You tend to get one or the other. I've had a mixture of both, but... Yeah, we've got a bit of history of back problems. It is the worst family. thing when Mike was telling me this morning about hockey. I thought, those people are running, bent over, just like you're not supposed to bend over. In field you're hockey, like yeah. You're bent double, aren't you, yeah, with, yeah. The, with the stick. It's just... You've got to bend your knees, but then all the strains on your knees. It's quite demanding. But, fit, um, fit sport, but you know, you pay a price at the end of the day. So, in comments page, yeah. how does Graham get his back better other than work? Because I'm not laying down. I've got to keep no. moving. I find walking it off. To be honest, I find keeping vertical yeah. and walking it off. But I'm not looking forward to the next three or four days. So, so on that note, yeah. we've pretty much done the frame of the shelter. In fact, we have. He has. We have. Yeah, I finished it off just now. So now we're going to do the roof. And obviously, I know it's a tarp, and everyone hates tarp in the bushcraft community. Well, it has its place, mm-hmm. but it, it, it doesn't kind of go in in keeping with the camp that I built here. But we wanted this shelter to be 100% waterproof, which it's going to be. So the reason that we used the hazel wattle fencing on the roof is because anyone who's put a a tarp over a bushcraft shelter that has rafters going across it will know that if it rains and it's at a shallow enough angle it will sag and you're constantly underneath pushing the tarp with a stick to get the water to flow off but by using the really tightly knit woven hazel the sticks that means that the tarp that sits on top and the water that hits it won't ever sag. It will just, it's a solid platform for off, it to be on. So it will run straight off. So that's why we used it. So now we're going to add some aesthetic value to it because we don't like the look of the tarp. And we're going to get some bracken with There's tons of dead bracken in this woodland. And we're going to put the bracken on top. And yes, it will die down. And then every couple of months, we'll just throw more layers on it and uh, sweep it off every now and then. And the tarp's not going to decay for years and years and years. But it just gets rid of that kind of ugly yeah. plastic. We'll be dry, it will be dry. But it'll be dry, so let's go get some bracken and then we'll cook up some food.
There's our fish. We're just going straight up whiting, isn't it, today, Dad? Whiting, yeah, big jumbo whiting caught off the south coast of the UK. We haven't gone for pretty cooking. It's just straight up, we're hungry. We've done a lot, a fairly bit, good amount of uh, cutting with bracken and things. So we're just going for, yeah, we, we put a bit of lemon on it and salt and pepper, but yeah. Other than that, skin Tuck peels in. off, doesn't it? It's cooked, yeah. But you got the knife. I've got a spoon as well. Knife, fork, spoon. Between us, we'll be able to eat got. it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you come yeah, off the bone, isn't it? Yeah, it's falling off. Look at that. In fact, I might go for that little bit. Dig in for a flake. Because there's always little meat on it. Watch your bones. Mmm. Yeah, that's nice. Big flakes of meat. We did eat one at home, cook what I call with all the uh, chefy stuff. <laughs> that's nice. I mean, in fairness, that's a much bigger fish than we'd normally have for two of us, isn't it? Yeah, we'd normally either have a mackerel, or, or we'd fillet that. We'd have yeah. that as a big fillet, two, two, two fillets, really, and we'd eat it like that. But because we were... It, it, with a fillet, you've got to watch it more, whereas with a whole fish, you yeah. can kind of leave it. Get more juice in it. You can either yeah. cook longer on the bone or fillet it, but you've got to watch it. Is this one caught on the boat? I was on boat fishing, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd like to catch it off the shore. I was going to say. But really, it's it's just we've got I don't know maybe three or four more big bunches of bracken to go, and then that's it. And the shelter's ready. Then I can start to make some woodworking things for the inside of the shelter. We can we can crack on with carving and, and various woodworking projects. Funny, we were just saying it's really funny weather. Funny day, There's fire. zero wind. Yeah, yesterday there was loads of wind yesterday, but there or the other day when was it? A couple of days ago we were here. There's zero, zero wind, which is really rare for where we live. And the fire was tough to keep going to get there's the no oxygen. Off. There's no wind, breeze. There's not even a breeze, is there, looking no. at the leaves? No birds. Everything I'm not heard any birds. is still. We were, we were saying it's like the apocalypse, isn't it? It's a bit strange, yeah. Which is kind of ironic with what's going on in the world. It's a strange, <laughs> it's a strange time for everybody in the world anyway. Yeah. Days like the weird, it's like the animals know now. It's devoid of life. <laughs> it's, it's quite eerie.